where are we? In a time of enormous change, it is not the end of days. It is a period of endings, but that's not all. Endings are also beginnings, and our period is the kind of ending and beginning that people experience only every few hundred years. In Europe, the Stone Age ended, and the Middle Ages began. Then the Middle Ages ended, and the modern period began. Now the modern period is ending, and something new will emerge. What emerges depends on us. What a time to be alive. This ending has been in the making for many years because our system ignores the interdependence of all people and nature. It started when the system of the Middle Ages went into crisis because of a pandemic and climate change. These two crises greatly upset the balance of power and wealth in the Middle Ages. To restore their wealth and power, Europe's wealthy began to experiment. They started by colonizing islands and forcing the people who lived there to work, growing and harvesting sugar, cutting down forests for energy, and mining gold and silver. When those people died, they enslaved and imported Africans to replace them. Slavery required boats, which required lumber, metal, sails, and navigation. These needs created growth in mining, textiles, and required a new attitude toward nature and resources. Slavery created so many jobs in Europe and North America and fueled such economic growth that it became the bedrock of a new way of life organized around jobs and money rather than human needs. Before Africans were enslaved, people around the world lived off common lands and created their own subsistence by cooperating with each other and nature. Because a life organized around money didn't make sense to people, they had to be forced to stop cooperating and take jobs. The European aristocracy enclosed their common lands and cut off the peasants' ability to provide for themselves, making them dependent on money. To force those who resisted jobs, beggars' laws were passed and police were invented to enforce them. In 1572, it became law in Britain that those convicted of begging for the first time would be burned through the year, and persistent beggars were to be hanged. In response to these punishments, European peasants began to accept the normalcy of jobs, money, and wage labor. To survive, they began organizing their lives around the economy and also stopped trusting their inner voice that told them that this change wasn't normal. Before jobs were normal, women around the world practiced various forms of herbal birth control and infanticide without controversy. To make sure women produced children who would become workers, they outlawed birth control and accused all midwives and women who continued practicing it of witchcraft and burned them alive. This became known as the witch hunts and after several years of women being killed for exerting control over their own bodies. To survive, they stopped passing this knowledge down and stopped trusting their inner wisdom. Thanks to the wealth created by the death of indigenous Americans, the enslavement of Africans, the jobs that slavery made possible, control over women's reproductive capacity, and energy for industry made possible by dominating nature, Europe, and what became the United States became wealthy, urban, and modern. Rather than acknowledge that this great wealth and new way of life is made possible by violence, Europeans called these developments the Enlightenment. Over a period of almost 200 years, violent systems of slavery, wage labor, control over women, and control over nature developed and connected to each other and gradually transformed into white supremacy, jobs, women's work, and progress. From these relationships, something much bigger emerged. A system of patriarchal racial capitalism that has allowed us to master flight, create electricity, create the internet, and brought us to the edge of extinction from climate change. It has provided us with amazing technological advancements, but it hasn't taught us how to live with each other. We've 
learn to act like the money needed for survival is more important than actually surviving, we've learned to ignore our inner wisdom. Because it's not a natural way to live, the expansion of this system has been met with resistance everywhere it's gone. To maintain profits, it shut down factories in one location and built them in others. As it's grown to cover the globe, its pollution has too. It's run out of new places and people to consume. Like a body that loses control over its organs when it begins to shut down, the system is losing control over its economy, politics, and society. We are here because it's time to remember. We can create systems, cultures, and a civilization based on the collective wisdom of our inner voices. Some people, all over the world, are already getting a start, creating new food systems by growing food with their neighbors, solving food problems right in their own backyards. People are creating new electricity microgrids that use local sources of renewable, shareable energy. Powered by these microgrids, people are using 3D printers to create houses made from all natural materials. Medical and care professionals are getting together to create more humane care systems. When connected, like slavery, jobs, the witch hunts, and the domination of nature were connected hundreds of years ago, these small, self-reliant, community-based practices can become a much larger system that organizes our lives around care, love, sustainability, and dignity. We can become more fully human more capable together of affirming our individual and collective dignity by tapping into ourselves, the resource that never runs totally dry. We are visionaries, and our lives are our most vital laboratory. We can grow a better world by creating these new economies, institutions, and cultural practices. We can let our crises in history take us back, then propel us forward to now, we are here, we are it, we always have been. The problem, the solution, the future, one past perfect, right here in our human hands. What a time to be alive.